And we're back, America. This is WWX. That's Wrestling with Exotics. I'm Think I Need a Fiji Water. That is... It's your boy, the franchise kid, Franchise Jerry. And we are here to discuss AEW Dynamite and Rampage. Yes, sir. Now, to kick this show off, we had the All-Atlantic champion, Orange Cassidy, taking on the bum, the scrub, the... What's his gimmick again? Jay Lethal. Bro, Jay Lethal got so many damn gimmicks. He could be Ric Flair. He can be fucking Hulk Hogan. He can be Jay. Le- he could be Double J, Randy Savage. You name it. You know, it's kind of crazy that the interview, the um, the commentators touched on that too. Because remember, they said they they said he throws two fingers in the air for Double J, even though he's JL. That was like, oh, so that is, everybody knows you just be copying people. Yeah, and, and you guys are supporting this. It's crazy. No, I, I tell you guys right now, no other wrestler in the fucking world can do what Jay Lethal does. I promise you, and get away with it, and have a long career like Jay Lethal has done doing this shit. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely not, bro. It's just not making any sense. But uh, let's get into this match. One thing I will say though, Jay Lethal. Anytime you lose, I be hyped. It just makes sense. He's like, when I see you, I'm like, nigga, better be taking that pin. He better not be winning. He better not be winning. Because even when you want him to win, he don't win. So it's just like, you know, it doesn't make any sense. Orange Cassidy displayed a lot of resilience in this match because I feel like Jelly was trying to come for him, but Orange showed, like, for the most part, a kind of serious side to him, I would say. And, like, I love when Orange just focuses in and just shows that technical side or, like, his, his ring grappling or his chain wrestling because he could – he could do it all in there for real. He could fly if he really wanted to. He could he could be a brawler, but it all depends on how seriously he takes the opponent. You know what I mean? Like uh, yeah. for example, Kip Sabian a couple weeks ago when he had he was in he was in OC's head. OC was so serious you didn't see him fighting, kick, you no know, the play kicks or none of that shit. And it's actually kind of funny seeing somebody else trying to do it to him. You know, it's Kip Sabian, but you see how that worked out for him. Him and Jay Lee had the same results. They both lost to him. Honestly, him being the All Atlantic champion is great. I feel yeah. like people have been trying to like not give him a fair shake with the title, and I don't know why. Because look at somebody like Pac. Pac had the title, but he's not he's not from America, and he doesn't live in the state, so he defended a lot internationally, which is really cool. But for example, Orange Cassidy's been defending that belt a lot, but in America, mm-hmm. so it's like I'm interested to see who is going to win it from him. Are they going to go international, or does it matter where you live, where you're going to defend the belt? And I think that's such a cool way. I've never seen a title been defend, defended like that. You know what I mean? I feel like Orange Cassidy's problem is, honestly, it's not his problem. I feel like this is how the company views him. I don't feel like they see him carrying the actual company. That's why he has the Atlantic belt, like, as, like, a little test drive. Like, okay, like, your gimmick doesn't really do a lot or say a lot. But you're pretty cool just by default. So let's see how you do with this belt. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like he's never going to get his fair shake, even though he is a crowd favorite. I can definitely see what you mean, but I really hope that's not the case because OC does have the potential to be that baby face where it's like, because like you say, he doesn't say too much, do too much. So if he gets the, the world title, he's going to be that rest that turns away no fades. He never runs away. He never complains, he never bickers, never bitches, never moans. Just like, okay, that's all you wanted? Yeah. All right, walk out of the camera angle. You could be with the interviewer since you want to be in my interview so bad. You know what I mean? And those little aspects, I feel like they're missing out on. Like, Yeah, I feel like that's going to turn the company up because yeah. he's a major draw. Yeah. But I don't feel like they'll ever give him the chance because they don't really see that like we see it. Yeah, because I definitely see it, bro. Um, Orange Cassidy, like I, I always say, his match with uh, Will Ospreay at Forbidden Door was amazing. And, like, even though you kind of figure he might not be putting over because he's one of the few AEW acts that actually lost that night. And even though he did lose, it didn't feel like he was losing when the match ended. You can see Will Ospreay had a new foul respect for him because, bro, he is on that same level as him. If you think Will Ospreay is smooth and technically sound, Orange Cassidy was, had him off guard, doing all the fly, flippy, flop, whatever moves you want to say, you know? Yeah. This match that he had with Jay Lethal was a good display of 
Orange Cassidy's talents, though. I like how in this match, he was really showing his veteran side. You know what I'm saying? When Jay Lethal hit his big move, he rolled out the ring. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So he couldn't elaborate on a pin. Also, I've said before in other podcasts, I like how he does his Superman punch, bro. It just looks more... Believable. Yeah, believable than Roman's because... I don't know. I feel like when Roman does his, I feel like he'd be trying to pose too much. Like, he'd do the same pose that's on all the t-shirts. You know what I'm saying? Orange Cassidy, his shit look like some real UFC get to the punch type shit. No pun intended. So, like, that's why I like his finisher more than the way Roman Reigns does it. The next match on Dynamite was something that we did not see coming. It was a win for top flight over the Young Bucks. Now, me personally, bro, I did not see that coming. I wanted it to see coming. But I, when I watched that match, I knew whoever you were watching it, you were going to be hyped for them. Because you literally said about this in the last podcast, how you would like to see Top Flight be the future of the AEW tag team division. And what better way to start that than have them actually beat basically the heart and soul of the tag team division. Yeah. And current trios champs. What do you think about that? Um, Man, I was I was stunned. This match itself was fucking great from head to toe. The moment I found out who was all in this match, I knew what we was going to get. But I didn't expect a win from Top Flight. I I thought for sure because the Young Bucks just came off of their trio's victory, they would have hell of momentum coming into this match, and they would use that to beat Top Flight. But it didn't go that way at all. And, man, I was just hype that top flight got this win Definitely. and i hope that it leads into more wins for them and it leads into an actual title because bro that's your face of the tag division right there i i don't know who else on the roster aw homegrown is better than them many people i would say that are on their level would be the young bucks the lucha bros those are brother tag teams and notice that top flight is also a brother tag team so, yeah. and the Hardys of Jeff can never get sober again, but <laughs> we don't know about that. But anyway, I see, bro, Dante and Darius have the ability and capability to be what exactly we're talking about, the future and face of the AEW tag team division. I just think they need to give them the ball and let them run with it because, look, at you doing that with the acclaim, and like we always say, Max is carrying the speech part, and then Anthony's kind of in ring. Both of those guys, Darius and Dante, the only thing they need to work on is the in ring, like mic skills. Other than that, it's cool watching them in the ring. They're very entertaining. They tell a whole story with what their action they do in the ring. You know what I mean? So sometimes it's kind of like it's crazy watching them struggle, but they claim to take off, and all they do is just say kind of awkward, funny stuff. Right. How do you think the Young Bucks will bounce back from this, though? I don't think there's anything for them to bounce back from because it wasn't a trio's fade. It was a tag team match, so I don't think it's really any skin off their nose. And it's not like Dante and Darius have another member. So, you know, I feel like they're just about to go do whatever it is that the Young Bucks do. And I'm hoping that Top Flight gets a title shot after this since they just beat two champions. Yeah, that brings me to my next question. I was going to say, since you don't think nothing will come from this, what do you think Top Flight is going to go? Because are you think they're going to go around bragging? Like, we just beat the former uh, former AEW Tag Team Champions, current Trios Champion, the EVPs of the company? Or you think it's just going to be a silent, like, uh, we got to keep an eye on the, the, the progression throughout the weeks? Nah, I feel like they've already arrived, and they're just proving that shit to everybody right now. And especially yeah. with this win over the Young Bucks, they ready for belts right now. I think they are too, bro. Next segment on Dynamite was Hangman being interviewed by John Moxley's wife, Renee Paquette. Now, bro, as you know, my boy Hangman handled business last week in the forum. He stood on what he said. He told John he'd leave him concussed, leave him delirious, have him experiencing what he was going through. And Renee confirmed all of that because, as you know, like I said, that's his wife. So you could see the remorse on Hangman, but, you know, he's not a monster. But he's like he's not a he's not a he's not a pussy either. He's a cowboy. He's tough. You know what I'm saying? He's not gonna just let anyone talk shit to him. So you know he had to step on him real quick. After all we've seen in his interview with Hangman, towards the end he mentioned 
that he had to get his friends together again and hash some things out. And we know, like I always say, he's an anti-social millennial cowboy. So it's like, what friends are you talking about? I mean, you pushed them all aside. But I think he's referring to the Young Bucks. But what did you take away from this interview with him and John Moxley's wife? Hangman was looking real sentimental. Everything changed when he heard that John actually cherishes him and respects him and shit. And I was just laughing because I'm like, oh, this is the tough cowboy, right? He even was damn near like, well, uh, how is John? Is he all right? And I'm monster. just like, yeah, whatever. Not a monster. Okay. How about keep that same energy? This is a man that made you forget who your kids are and gave you a concussion and left you face down in the ring and bragged about it. And now you're over here. How is he? Is he cool? I didn't want to do him like that, but uh, you know he was talking shit. But he did shit, it like that. He's talking shit. You know, I, you I fuck just... with him too. Like I was like, nah. Why bro. Moxie don't gotta keep the same energy? He was talking big and bad. Moxie wasn't there. He wasn't there to say anything. I'm saying, look. But why is he telling his wife if we're even giving him props? He was talking about hey man, like look, he was a pussy. If it's me, I'm not about to be sitting there asking how he's doing or possibly, hey, can you give him a hug for me or something? Whatever he was about to say at the end of that shit, he had to catch himself because he was all like, no, 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 it's going to sound too soft, too soft. And it's all like, nah, bro, I'm going to keep the same energy. If I wanted to damn near end your career last week, I'm going to keep that same energy after I That's beat fine. your ass. I think you might be on something, bro. I think you might be on something. Uh, but at the same time, I don't know what this means. I want to see Hangman and him continue this feud because we both have different ends on the spectrum how we look at this. So It's time for both of them to focus on the big picture, the AEW World Heavyweight Championship. And right now, it's in the hands of a fucking bum. So they need to fix that. Next match we got on AEW was Jake Herger taking on Ricky Starks. Now, this match obviously was an easy dub for Ricky Stark. I mean, they always show it like Jake Hellier puts up the struggle when, like, shit, like he's going to do something, but he's not going to do shit. He's going to lose. Yeah, bro. At this point in his career, Jay Hager, he's, he's a fucking joke. I don't know how the hell he was able to even win the world title back in WWE. That didn't make no sense to me. And it seems like ever since then, he's let himself get out of shape. You can see it in the ring. You can see his body. His fucking abs just look like scrambled eggs. Like I'm just like, bro, you look terrible. Obviously, it was a good win for Rick. But it was just a terrible showing from Jack Hager, even though he did have his dominant points in the match. It was just like, bro, you still got that dumbass look in your eye, and nobody will ever take you seriously. It's time to either retire or rebuild. And I would lean more to retiring if I was him because he'll never hold another world title, ever. That hat had more fucking star power than he did. That's a shame. Up next, we got Brian versus Bandito. And this is one hell of a battle, okay? We knew Brian was going to win, but every opponent he goes through, they don't be just laying down. You know what I'm saying? They really make Brian work for it. He's got six more people left, and then he can finally see what's up with MJF. But I'm really hoping that matches improv. You know what I'm saying? It's not already pre-decided or anything so that way we can see how good of a wrestler mjf actually is and if he beats brian danielson straight up i will then give him his respect as deserved yeah i don't see uh mjf being able to just beat daniel bryan in a in a sense of a straight up wrestling match where he's not cheating in any type of fashion because it's just daniel knows everything that you're going to try to do and he can reverse it so mm-hmm. he's going to have to think outside the box. So then that that within itself is going to be just an interesting thing to witness. So I can't wait for March 5th because I know Dan is going to, like you said, beat all these six people. It doesn't matter if they're going to give him a hard time. That's what he looks forward to, you know? 
I just want to say real briefly that I like how Tony and Paige are clicking up. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like the females that came from WWE are banding together against the homegrown talent in AEW. And the reason why I like that is because we're getting a chance to see who is really better. You know what I'm saying? Is it the AEW women's locker room or is it WWE's? Now it's time for the main event of Dynamite. It was Kushida taking on Darby Allen for the TNT Championship. Now this is a very hard-hitting match. Kushida is known for his strong style, based out of Japan, uh, well-known in New Japan Pro Wrestling. Uh, just making a guest appearance to take on Darby for the TNT Championship. He nearly broke Darby's hand in half. Like It was just crazy watching him apply all these maneuvers just to try to break Darby's arm. So it made me feel like the TNT title was really prestigious, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, watching those type of matches, no matter how lesser known they are than some competitors may be on WWE, see people compete like that, bro, it just really shows you who has the drive and the ability to take it to that next step. And you see, out of these two, Darby just had a little bit more tonight, but I could see definitely see Kashida coming back and taking the title from him. I feel like with this loss, Kushida is just never going to really amount to a major title in AEW. And I feel like this loss just highlighted that. Kushida gave it everything he possibly had. He damn near ripped Darby's arm off. You know what I'm saying? And it still wasn't enough. I want to say there was a possibility he could probably win an all Atlantic championship at some point, bro. Because think about it. Like, who, who's to say he can't win that, at least? Like, because of TNT, he, he, like, he's out of that. We see he's not with I don't that. see him being better than Orange Cassidy. Down the line, bro. Somebody's like, you know. You know what yeah, because it's going to have to be down the line. As of right now. He's finished. As of right now, he's definitely giving me finished vibes. This was a great win for Darby Allen, but he's got his work cut out for him next week when he goes against Buddy Murphy. I know it's Matthews, but that shit sounds gay. <laughs> it's, I, it's time for Buddy to win a championship for us. And nonetheless, I just feel like he's been on the roster too long and not done shit. And it'd be kind of great. And I feel like that would make Malachi push for a championship more. Because how is, like, you know, Buddy's supposed to be like his underling, his right hand man, like the Jay Uso kind of thing. Mm. How he can go before you? Yeah, if we being honest, I'm going to just call it right now. I don't see him beating Darby next week. <laughs> For dead. some reason, he's going to do some stupid ass shit and lose the match. Just like how Kushida should have won this match. It's pretty much going to go like that. So, yeah, I'm not expecting a win next week from Buddy. they rather put... A uh, little ass white boy wearing booty <laughs> shorts and painting his nails as the TNT champion. Hey, to each his own. <laughs> what did you think about Dynamite as an overall show this week? Honestly, bro, it was like a 7.5. I don't really think anything too major really happened. There's a lot of just follow up based on what happened on the forum show, which was like their big show they were marketing. Heavily, you know what I'm saying? Especially, I'd like to kick that show off with John Moxley taking on Hangman. Like, that it wasn't for a title, but it felt like just as big, if not bigger than this match, starting off for OC taking on Jay Lethal. So I just felt that you could feel the difference, you know what I mean? Yeah. My favorite moment was Hangman being interviewed by John Moxley's wife. Mm -hmm. Just seeing that follow up of everything that happened and you seeing that John Moxley's experience and all that pain and suffering that he made for the Hangman for it just makes all the sense, you know? I'm interested to see how he's going to return and what he has to say. Dynamite had a decent show this week. I enjoyed most of the matches. My favorite one being Top Flight's match. I was not expecting that win. I hope that win allows them to have a title match against the Acclaim and finally take them belts off of them. It's time for Top Flight to be on top. I enjoyed the show, though. And now we'll be talking about AEW Rampage. And Rampage started off with Ethan Page versus Jungle Boy. JB picked up a lucky victory against this man. And I say lucky because 
if Matt Hardy didn't hold him, <laughs> he most likely would have won this match. He was dominating Jungle Boy for real. And I just like how they thought that they was enslaving Matt Hardy, but he's really just hoeing them the whole time. He's so, like an anchor, bro. He keeps yeah. making him lose. That shit is hilarious. I, I love that for them. What did you think about this match, bro? Double down on what you were saying, bro, about Ethan Page dominating the match. I think that's absolutely right. Jungle Boy got very lucky, and I feel like he only got lucky because he's trying to push him. I didn't feel like this was a believable victory because Ethan Page is also a, bit, a veteran on the independent circuit, has more experience than Jungle Boy. So, like, I don't really see him losing to him, and he didn't even lose to him in a convincing fashion. Yeah. Jungle Boy's character seems very lost right now. After that great win over Luchasaurus, he should be trying to get championships, but instead, just like he mentioned in the last podcast, trying to tag him up with the hook and make them a tag team. And that's not what these guys need, man. They need to be stars on their own because when you're trying to find yourself, you don't need someone else who's trying to find yourself. You're both lost. Yeah, and I know the commentators highlighted that. They was all like, oh, Hook and Jungle Boy make a really good tag team. Well, no, <laughs> no, that's true. <laughs> But no, we're not trying to see that all the time. Mm-mm. One more thing I like to add about Jungle Boy: he has the most wins in AEW aside from Don Moxley, but yet he doesn't have nearly as much accolades as Don Moxley besides his once tag team title run. So that should tell you, Jungle Boy, you have a future and potential in this company, but you gotta really market yourself well. And I think what would be best for him, bro? I don't know what would you think. I think I think he needs to repackage himself. Like, get rid of this, like, Tarzan type thing, because that's too hard for people to take it seriously. I really feel like he should lean into the fact that he's from Hollywood, like, do a grind job, be an actor and shit, and, like, be cocky, cut his hair, like, you know what I'm saying? Do a, or do us like, a slick rag on the board, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Something different. I feel like he should just switch it up. He needs to go the heel route. He's got to drop the Jungle Boy name. That shit just makes him look childish, you know what I'm saying? And you diminishing yourself the moment you put boy in your name and nobody's going to take you seriously or want to put a main world heavyweight championship on you, bro. It's I don't. It's not believable. Yeah. The next day I went on Rampage, it was Darby Allen challenging Buddy Matthews for the TNT Championship officially. Now, I think this is going to be a hell of a match, but I believe... Buddy should win this match. If he doesn't, this would be a travesty. Not only to him, but to the House of Black. Yeah. The real, all the momentum. Don't you, you seen them be cooking up with gas and bro, they haven't had no weak spots. This would be one of the start of a slippery slope, bro, and I'm not looking forward to that. Everybody in this fucking world knows that Buddy Murphy is way better than Darby Allen. Way, way more, better. A little more technical, way more precise. What a better athlete. You name it. Can do whatever. Speaking of which, what do you think about this Eddie Kingston and NXT segment? Because I feel like they're going to recruit Eddie, and I think that could be good for him. I don't know about them, but I think it would be good for him. I just really hope that Eddie Kingston whoops Ortiz's ass. I don't like Ortiz, bro. He be saying that he's Eddie's friend, but he be on bullshit on the side. And he swore up and down that Eddie was going to hit that female in the ring. And it's all like, bro, even if he was, who gives a fuck? Like, she's obviously in the ring and felt like it was her place to hit a man with a chair. So, you know, one thing I hate is why women don't want equality when it comes to getting these hands. Okay, you were showing out. And you about to do me bogus and make me lose this match, but I can't put my hands on you. But you putting your hand, no, you hit, you assaulting me with a weapon. That's insane. Mm-hmm. I am all about equality. Yes, yes, yes. That is something that he will explain in the court of laws. I don't answer no, really? nobody but Jesus. <laughs> right. <laughs> How do you feel about Jay Cargill taking the <laughs> Oh my god, bro. Wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. 
I just really love that tag team match between Jay Cargill, the TBS champ, Lola Gray, versus two scrubber dubs. I didn't even get their names, but I just... Bro, two little thick scrubs. That's who they went against. Jay goes 49-0 and with this victory. And I'm just like, I want to see her in real competition. I'm tired of seeing her against scrubber dub dubs. And just these weak ass bitches. Like, no, I wouldn't even flex that I just beat a scrub. That's like saying you beat a special ed kid. You, what are you flexing? Everybody knew that you was going to win. I haven't really seen her in any real legible wins, like where I was like, damn, that one, okay, yeah, for sure. Like, even when she beat that one trans wrestler, I was still like, we know that you're about to win and do her bogus and everything. And she did. And she did. I want to see her actually pushed. I want to see her in a Bianca Belair type status match. You feel me? Like, mm-hmm. that's what I want to see. And then I'll be able to really be like, yeah. Jay, she, she's really the GOAT if we're being for real. Like, I hope for her 50th win, she goes against some real competition, goes against somebody that really deserves it. Like, you know what I'm saying? I want to see her go against somebody like Paige, like somebody that's going to make me believe, like, oh, shit, this was a real good stamp match for you to show that you was really running shit. Yeah, I completely agree with that, bro. One thing I'm looking for in J is she should get that women's championship, that the AEW Women's World Championship. Because it's TBS sounds like a test starter, like trying to see what she's capable of. But I feel like she's hit it out the park. That's why they haven't taken it off for you. Yeah. And she's still the first champ, and that's about to be in existence for almost damn near two years. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what's to come of that division, but I feel like she needs to elevate from it, though. You know what I mean? Definitely. She needs to stop wrestling these scrubs. And now it's time for the main event. Well, I guess you could call it just another mid-card match. (laughs) Because it was Daniel Garcia (laughs) in Action Andretti. And this match, even though it was a good match, it was still giving me mid-card vibes, you know what I'm saying? So I didn't really look at it like a main event. And with that being said, AEW should be ashamed of themselves for not going hard on Rampage. Having a show with a cool name like Rampage should have fire matches one after the other every fucking time that show airs. So I don't get why... They don't go as hard as they do on Dynamite for Rampage. But getting back into the match real brief, I will say Action Andretti, bro, he's a legit wrestler. He can he can wrestle for real. But let's be real. He can't hold a candle to the Ocho. So I don't understand why he lost or what Chris is trying to do with him. Yeah, I don't know why he's been pushing him out of nowhere. It doesn't make any sense, bro. I can't wait to see how their match is going to turn out next week, though. I hope Chris gets his revenge, so that way he can stop making a mockery of himself. He shouldn't have lost the first time, you know what I'm saying? What did you think about that match? Honestly, uh, I thought Action Jetty was going to lose, but Daniel Garcia just proven to me he lost all the momentum I thought he had for Coming I mean, from being Brian Danielson and and having the pure championship, like he doesn't feel like he accomplished any of that in the past prior months to this. I feel like he just but lost back in the shuffle. So, actually, Jody, I gotta tip my cap to you. You prove why you're the better man. You know what I mean? And I think he has potential to be a good mid card, like you said, just a good mid card main event. You know what I'm saying? But. Daniel, I'm disappointed with Daniel, honestly. I expected him to be, do way better. And I know you fucked with Daniel, too. Yeah, I expected him to win this match. And he let us down. What you, so what you think about the show, bro? I thought Rampage was more watchable this week than it was last week. Um, I wasn't too interested in the main event, which was just a bona fide mid-card match. 
but I did think Ethan Page and Jungle Boy's match was a good way to kick the show off. But like I said, if you're going to have a cool ass name like Rampage, every match should be a fucking banger. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It should go crazy. So the fact that it isn't and you guys just kind of use this show as a play show, somebody need their ass whooped for that. Sure, bro. I can understand that to some degree. I'm not the biggest fan of Rampage, but I kind of prefer that in mind a little bit more. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like two hours long, but it's like it always flies by. I always be like, damn, I wish Dynamite like, could be like Raw. I feel like if it was, they used it more in a creative fashion because they can get away with more and with more exposure to the roster. Make them grow faster. You know what I'm saying? Like, as in, like, people who are ring savvy, but they not have that personality. You get exposed to the, the mainstream media, so you have to grow it. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. What'd you think about Rampage overall? Overall, Rampage, I want to say a solid six. I'm just being generous. Six. And nothing enthralling. It was just cool to actually see a good showing from Action and Jay, like a believable. It wasn't no surprise roll up or nothing like that. He beat Daniel Garcia clean, and that was something that, uh, cool I didn't expect to see tonight. And that's going to bring our show to an end. If this has been another episode of Wrestling with Exotics. I think I need a Fiji order. It's your boy, the Franchise Kid, Franchise Jerry. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. And share this shit with the world, y'all. And make sure to turn on your post notifications so you can stay up to date with us and know every time we drop a track. Peace.